There are hundreds of ways that you might use forms with your clients for client onboarding, for sales, the list goes on and on. But we find so many organizations that are asking their clients to fill out the same information over and over again, or they're exposing information about their clients to the world, and you really don't want to do that. Hey, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at fill out forms and some best practices on how we can use forms with our client data. If you haven't used Fillout before, you can check out their really generous plans using our affiliate link in the description below. So our use case is that we have clients who are requesting tasks from our agency. And either most people are asking for a ton of extra form fields, or you've got a nice way to say, this is who it's requested by, but now you're exposing all of your different clients and you don't want to share this information with the world. So let's talk about how we can clean this up. First of all, in Airtable, we have three tables that we're working with. We have our clients. These are the people or companies who are requesting things from us. We have projects, which are tied to our clients. And we have tasks, which are tied to our projects and to our clients. And this form that we have in Fillout will allow us to create new tasks. So the first thing that we want to do is have this requested by field in Fillout and have it automatically populated with that client so that they don't have to select it themselves. To do this, we're going to take a look at the default value. We want to inject a default value. And if you click this plus symbol, you can see we've got several different options. The one we're going to take a look at here is going to be our URL parameters. Now, if you haven't created any URL parameters, there's a button to be able to create them. Or if you need another way to get there, you can click at the gear icon for the settings up at the top and then click on URL parameters. Let's say that we want to identify our client by their email address. So I've got this auto suggestion and I can click on that or you can click to add new. Now, if I click into email, I can set a sample value. So I'm going to include an email address that I know is associated with one of my clients to make it easier for testing. Let's press done and we'll X out of here. Now take a look, if we choose from our default values and go to our URL parameters, I can select email. But we have a problem here. It says note that the default value must be the record ID for the records from the chosen table. So email address is not the record ID. And I did this just to show you so that you're aware that somehow we need to translate this into a record ID in order to get it to work. So I'm going to add a new URL parameter for the record ID, but we're gonna circle back to this because there is a way that we can use the email address to turn that into a record ID. We'll show you that in a minute. So let's go back to our settings and our URL parameters, and we're going to add new, and we'll call this one record ID, and we are going to add that sample value. Next, we need to find what that sample value is going to be. So inside of Airtable, we need to get the record ID from our client record. I've done this already on my clients table. I created a formula field and called it client ID. And you can get this value automatically just by searching for record ID. And then you'll need to close the parentheses and save that. Then I can copy this value. And back inside of fill out, we can paste that value. We'll X out of here. Now in our default value, we can click that blue plus button. We can choose from our URL parameters and we can select record ID. So let's check this out. If we publish our form, we'll open up our form. And you'll notice in our URL, we're passing both our email address in and the record ID. For this use case, we only need the record ID. And because we have that as the default value, it's automatically selecting the correct client record. We're not expecting the user to select that record for themselves. Now, of course, we're using those sample values to make it easy for us for testing. But inside of Airtable, we can actually create our links for each of our clients by taking the link of the form, putting in that URL parameter of record ID and setting that equal to either the record ID or in our case, we created a client ID. Once we have that, that means we could click on this link to any of them, not just my Dan Lehman record. We could click on tech innovators, open that up and we can see its record ID now points at the tech innovators client. So this works well for situations where you can identify what that record ID is, that unique identifier. So for example, you could have a client portal that has that link that they could automatically click, which is going to pass that context about their specific ID. Or maybe you use an Airtable automation, which then sends that link to them in an email that they can click on. But we still have a problem here in exposing our client data, because what if someone said, nah, I'm just going to X off of this record and I want to add it myself, and then now I've got access to all the client records again. So we're going to solve for this back inside of Fillout. 
we're going to scroll down to our requested by advanced settings and we're going to add a new filter. So let's add a condition and we can choose from our fields. Remember, we have that client ID, which back inside of Airtable represents the actual ID of that record. And so if that client ID matches the URL parameter of that record ID, then we want to show from that list of available clients. Now we know that that should only match up with a single client. We'll say done and we'll publish this. And now if we were to X off this user and add our own user, we only see that one user that's assigned to us. We don't have the ability to find that extra information unless we just happen to go into our URL parameters and we're guessing at people's record IDs or email addresses, then that would expose information still. So it's not 100% secure, but this way you're going to really obfuscate any of that client information that you might accidentally expose. But then here's the next question. If we're doing all of this work ahead of time to automatically assign that requested by and not put it on the user, do we really want it to be a field on our form? So one thing that we could do is click into our settings and go to logic and just say, let's hide this field. And so we have one fewer field. You don't have to actually choose the client record, even though we're still sending it the information of that record ID in the background. And if we were to submit a record to create a task, then that task record in Airtable is automatically created for us and still links to the correct client, even though we didn't actually ask for that information from the user. But this leads to another user experience issue. Does the person who's filling out that form feel like it understands who they are? Yes, we don't want extra clicks, but this raises another question from a user experience perspective. When I, the user, look at this form, I don't actually believe that it knows anything about me, the client. And so we still want to have a way to be able to identify that we know who that client is. So this would be a really good opportunity to use answer piping. I'm just going to add in a text field here in H1. So I'm going to type this at symbol, which is going to allow me to reference data. Now, this time we're not choosing from our URL parameters. We're choosing from our requested by, because remember, this is automatically filled out in the background. I'm not going to choose the requested by themselves. I'm going to press continue. And then this is where I can select the client name. We'll add a comma. And now we have this message. We can publish our form. And now we can see this automatically shows information about our client. It doesn't make them fill out the field themselves, but it lets them know that it knows the context of who they are. Now, there are going to be situations where it's not always feasible for us to be able to know the record ID of our client. What happens if you only know the email address of your client and not the record ID? Inside a fillout, we've got a feature that allows us to prefetch that data that we can say, hey, in Airtable, find the correct client based off of their email address and prefetch that information for me. To do this, we're going to click on the Integrate tab. We're already connected to Airtable. We'll press Edit. And here's where we're going to prefetch our record. So we'll add New. We'll call this Client Record. We're going to choose from the same base. And we'll choose our Clients table. And now we'll say where the contact email equals. And then we'll choose our URL parameter of the email. We can test our fetch here. And you can see this works. It's retrieving our Dan Lehman record based on the email address. We'll press Done and we'll update our integration. And now we can click in that requested by again, and we can X out of our record ID here. We'll press that blue button again. And here we'll click on the database icon. And this is that client record that we prefetched. We'll click on our requested by, and we need to inject a new default value. This time we'll click on that database and we'll choose our client record that we prefetch. We'll press continue. And now remember, we still need to use the actual record ID, not the email address itself, but the record ID. So let's test to make sure this works. We'll publish it. And now we're still able to have all the same functionality. We can still pipe in their name. We can still hide that field. It's just finding information based on their email address instead of the record ID. When given a choice between the two, you'll still want to lean on record ID. But if you're in an environment that's not really about Airtable, you're in some separate client portal, it's really helpful to be able to prefetch information by a different unique value, such as an email address. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is we still have an issue when it comes to selecting our projects. We're showing all of the different projects that we have available to us inside of the system. Again, we only want to show the projects that are relevant to that client. So this will handle again with filtering. We'll click on project here and we'll click on advanced, scroll down and we can choose to add our filters. We'll add a condition. And then back in Airtable, if I'm on my projects table, 
we need to have a lookup field of our client ID. So to do this, we're looking at our client linked record, and then we're pointing to our client ID field that we have, that formula, which is showing the ID, the record ID of that client. And the reason that we have this lookup value is so that back in our filters, we have something to compare it to. Because now we're talking about the projects table. So our Airtable field here is going to be client ID. And then again, we'll choose from our database and we'll choose our client record and record ID. Press done. And now when we reload the form and I click on the projects, I only see the two projects that are linked to me, the client. I don't see all of the projects that we have in our database. So hopefully it was helpful to see how we can use more advanced features in fillout, like prefetching, URL parameters, and filters to get the desired user experience we're looking for. If you have any questions about your own automation project, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free consultations.